Yes, I think my best answer is that uh, I think God is working through the Syrian people. In many ways, some of the things um, that I've seen, of course I'm an outsider, but um, everything that I have seen in the last four to five years, my question has been, uh, where is God? Where is God's people? Why doesn't God come through and do something? And um, I don't have a good answer to that. But now coming here on this trip, which by the way, has probably been the best trip I've ever taken, one of the hardest, but definitely the best. And I've been to maybe 50 to 60 countries. And I say that because I think God's work is going on through God's people here. So maybe in the midst of our question, where is God? Uh, in this conflict, I think probably the best answer is God's people. And so I have met some of the most amazing people I've ever met, uh, some of the most humble, powerful, uh, smart, beautiful Christians here. And so um, how is God working? Through the Syrian people. Yes, I have seen God working in Syria in a mighty way. Um, just as Jesus um, loved us unconditionally, I have seen the church in Syria love unconditionally as they reach out to help uh, displaced people who have lost their homes, lost their livelihoods and their lives um, through providing physical assistance and food packages but also uh, emotional assistance and spiritual assistance. Um, they have um, really looked at the whole person, not just the buildings. They have um, tried to rebuild the whole person. They recognize that uh, the destruction of Syria is much deeper than bombed out buildings. Um, they try to work with, uh, with people in rebuilding their homes, rebuilding their lives, um, working with um, many other churches. I think that's been one of the most exciting things to see here is that all the churches are coming together, united, to do the work of Jesus. They are truly the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in Syria. Uh, yes, I've noticed uh, since we've been in Damascus visiting many different churches, different denominations, and the response to all of these denominations in a very difficult situation with displaced persons with no possessions, great deal of distress, no food, no water, their children to, to look after, that they have responded with uh, tremendous love and practical care for these people that they've never met before. And what that means to me is that all of these people from different churches and denominations have been able to uh, place their faith in God and God's requirements and commands to love the stranger, even love your enemies, and have uh, trusted God to empower them to do all of these things for these people that need so much. It's been amazing to see how God's been working through the churches here in Syria, a real eye-opener for me. Uh, I was pretty ignorant about what was going on here, but it, it's just a no-brainer that God is at work when you see the people in the congregations and the way they are not only taking care of one another, but especially the way they are open to, the, to receiving people who have lost everything and have come and need help. Um, so you see God working through the church as the body of Christ, uh, literally reaching out with ar open arms, being the hands of Christ like that, giving of themselves self-sacrificially, but the amazing thing is they don't see it as a sacrifice. They just see it as this is what one does. This is what Jesus would do, so this is what we do. I love that. The other way I see God at work is in the reception of Christians who are being taken in and helped. 
they are so grateful and they give glory to God. Of course they're grateful to the churches and the people who are helping them, but God gets the glory. I, I love that about Syrian Christians, that they are deflecting glory from themselves to God, which is wonderful. And the last thing I would say is that I want to see God at work in other ways through the Outreach Foundation. I mean, the Outreach Foundation in the way it comes over to come alongside Syria, not staying in Beirut where it's safe, not just receiving Syrians in the United States where it's safe, but coming across the border where bombs are falling and saying, we, we want to show you that we care. We want to demonstrate that. So the Outreach Foundation is doing a good job and I wanna see God at work through the church in America giving to organizations like the Outreach Foundation. I wanna see just a fraction of the self-sacrifice of Syrian Christians through American Christians who are comfortable and can easily support, certainly financially, but most of all with their prayers. That would be great. I'd love to see God do a powerful work through American Christians making a difference in Syria. You know, I have been to the Middle East um, six different times. And on this trip, I think what stood out for me the most in seeing God at work has been when we have gone out to eat, I have seen God working especially hard in the hearts of the women. Um, a lot of us, when we go out, we will eat certainly and we will drink, that kind of stuff. Um, but some of our people started dancing at the last time we went and, um, and they were doing some funny American dancing. But it was fun to watch the Syrian women. They came alive and they were clapping and they were smiling. And I, it just dawned on me for the very first time I could see God working in the hearts and minds of the Syrian women, bringing joy, bringing hope. Now what that means in the long run is the men aren't far, far behind, nor are the children. Um, I think on this trip I, I, I will walk away with um, clearly seeing God at work in the hearts and minds of the Syrian women. First of all, it's so good to be back in Syria. I've been thinking about coming back since I was in a here in April. and. I always, always know that I expect to find God when I come. And as soon as I step off the plane or step out of the car, there he is in the faces and the people of the places that I get to go here. And one of the, a special, the special memories that I have from this trip is being in Feruze. I was in Feruze once a number of years ago, and so it was my second time to be there. And we spent good time with the church, the pastor and his family, and just sharing our lives down in the fellowship hall, having some manaish and some tea. And I got to meet a wonderful woman named Shamse, who greeted me in the best way I could have ever expected in this time after Christmas. We're celebrating the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, born as a human being, as a baby in Bethlehem. And I think of that, this is Christmas, and I love to sing. And here was Shamse, an older woman in the church who was, we, we had a language barrier. We couldn't speak English to her or Arabic, but there she was singing to me a very familiar song. And it was just such a blessing. I thought, here is the Lord himself on his birthday, greeting me in a place that he was born not too far from, and she was delightful, Shamse. I could repeat that story for almost every person that I have had the chance to converse with on this trip, to share life with, to share coffee with, to share worship with. God is in every person that he has created to be his child, and this place, Syria, is filled with them, from Feruze to Homs, to Damascus, Latakia, Yazdi. One place I really, really wanted to go because I knew God would be walking there was in Aleppo. But even though I couldn't walk in Aleppo, 
Aleppo came to me in the form of Assis Nasir and the special hug that he gave me from his wife Tammy and the gift that he gave me from her and the chance that I had to actually speak to her on the phone. So this is, these are the places that I find God. He finds me in the people that he puts in my path and I'm ever grateful that I get to keep coming back to Syria because I know he'll be here. And uh, that's, what I, that's where I saw him. He blessed me in the way that I get to share life with my family here in Syria. God has been at work in the Middle East for thousands of years. He has created his people and he has created the church as a family. And it's important that we understand the current situation in Syria within the context of the history of the church, which is God's family. We're giving special attention to this part of the family because of the situation in Syria, but the church is responding to this situation from out of the depth of its faithfulness and its relationships and its love that has been developed over many, many centuries. I am impressed with the courage of the people of the church in Syria and throughout the Middle East. I'm impressed that people trust God to protect them and to care for them, even in the very worst of times. We have heard from people who have lost their homes, people who have lost their livelihoods, people who have lost their loved ones. And yet in the midst of all of this loss, still they are thankful to God for the blessings that God has given them. And so they have courage from their faith, but they also have a kind of joy in their hearts. There is great sadness to be sure. There is great sadness in the hearts of those who mourn the loss of their children from random bombings. There's great sadness in the hearts of those who mourn the loss of their friends who have been forced to flee and will likely never return to Syria. But even in this sadness, there is joy that God continues to give life, that God continues to give them hope. Much of this courage and much of this joy comes from the work of the pastors in the churches. The pastors have been faithful to their congregations. They have taken care of them as a good shepherd cares for the sheep. They have provided them with food, with clothing, with medical assistance, with financial assistance for their many needs. And part of that provision comes not from the local congregation, but it comes from the worldwide community of the church. I come from a part of the world where we have more than we need in a physical sense. But we need to know and we need to be strengthened and encouraged by those who rely on God for all of their physical needs. And so those who have physical and financial resource through the Outreach Foundation are able to give and to support and to help keep the church alive here in this part of the world. For this small gift that we are able to give, we are able to receive so much more in return. We meet young people in Syria every day who do not let the current situation discourage them or make them afraid, but young people who say, this is our country, this is our homeland, this is our church, this is our faith. And we are going to stay true to that faith and true to our people, no matter what comes, because it's important that the message of Jesus Christ, that the gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of love and forgiveness and hope and the message of peace among all people continue to be preached and continue to be modeled and continue to be embodied here in this place, especially in this time. And for that gift, I will always be grateful. It has been tremendously humbling to experience what God is doing through the Christians we have met in uh, this wonderful country, this troubled country, 
and yet to see how God has been at work. Uh, we have experienced the faithfulness of God's people in everything from the care for elderly to the experiencing of rebuilding of homes and the church coming together to strengthen families, to enable them to rebuild their lives, to be a part of uh, rebuilding of a broken country and to see how the church has been at work in places of persecution, places of struggle, to see the good that God is doing through not only Christians but through peace-loving Muslims, through uh, other avenues that are making a difference in the world. We have learned much I think just our presence here, we have not done so much as simply to remind the community of faith here that they're not alone, that they have friends in the United States and other parts of this world who stand with them in solidarity. We pray for you. We thank you for your prayers for us.